All right, we are at section 12.4, elastic properties of solids. Um, well, let's share the uh, PowerPoint. And there it is. And so the, the, we're, gonna we're gonna study three different types of uh, moduli. Um, the Young's modulus, the shear modulus, and the bulk modulus. Uh, there's a few others that uh, uh, Poisson ratio is, is you, you can imagine a, uh, like an eraser, if you push on an eraser, how much it bulges, that's the Poisson ratio. There's even some negative items that have negative Poisson ratios. They're a little strange, but um, if you look up negative Poisson ratio, you'll you'll find it. Anyway, we're, we're at the elastic properties of solids. Uh, the elastic modulus is uh, defined as the stress over the strain. The stress is the, uh, basically it's the pressure, the uh, uh, force over an area. Um, and the uh, strain is the deformation that you get in the material that you're studying. Uh, so let's uh, look at these. Young's modulus measures the resistance of a solid to a change in its length. So if you take a, uh, we're not talking about a spring. The spring is completely different. We're talking about if you have a straight wire and you start hanging some masses on it, how much it stretches. The, the amount of mass that you put on it is, uh, is the, uh, the force and the the change in length is the delta L. Uh, the shear modulus, we'll get to the shear modulus. It's, if we take this book and we push, you know, we have a, a section here and a section here. If we slide it, how much it deforms, uh, how much it deforms uh, because of the pressure that applied laterally, laterally the shear modulus. Um, and then the bulk modulus, measures the resistance of solids or liquids to change in their volume. In other words, if you can imagine that same erase, eraser, if you uh, were to put it under high pressure, how does it deform? Um, how, how does it get smaller because of the, um, the pressure that's surrounding it? Um, all right, let's, um, uh, let's start with Young's modulus. Okay, we, we have a, a metal bar here. The amount by which the length of the bar changes due to the applied force is delta L. And you'll see that the force, the force is the force times area. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, that's measured in pascals. One pascal is one newton per square meter. Well, a square meter is a very large area and one newton, uh, that's, uh, roughly about a uh, hundred grams. So if you can imagine a hundred grams on a large one meter sheet, that's not much pressure. Uh, as an example, atmospheric pressure is, is uh, uh, 101.3 kilopascals um, or 101,325 uh, 101, uh, pascals. So that's 101,325 newtons per square meter. That's the amount of air that sits on a square meter. Um, just some relationships. Uh, we're gonna get to this more, uh, I think in chapter 14 when we study fluids, but just an introduction. Um, so uh, atmospheric pressure, 101.325 um, kilopascals, the pre four, uh, pounds per square inch is 14.7. Inches of, of mercury, the way you normally in in weather, the, the the normal atmospheric pressure would be 29.9 uh, inches of mercury, uh, and uh, uh, atmospheric pressure would be uh, 1,013 millibars. Uh, those are just some of the uh, units of pressure that um, that we're familiar with. There's a bunch of them, uh, so. Uh, the, the amount of pressure, the amount in this case, it would be the amount of pull on this bar. The, the LI is the original length. Delta L is the increase in length. Uh, so that's the Young's modulus. Um, so we talked about the elastic limit uh, when we 
uh, talked about springs. You know, if you if you go beyond the elastic limit of a spring, you deform it, possibly break it. It's the same here. If you just have a straight piece of wire and you pull it and pull it and pull it until it you reach the elastic limit, it can break, and you've ruined it. But we used to do. I mean, I've done uh, experiments on Young's modulus, and you you put force on it and you stretch it and you take the force off and it, it returns to its uh, normal state. Um, so uh, you can see this, th there's a linear portion, there's a linear portion to the elastic behavior of a, a, a steel wire. Um, so we'll, we'll look at tables of the, um, of, of, uh, the moduli in a bit. Now, shear modulus, I showed you the, the book. They use the book here. It's the deformation. It's this delta x increase. I'm exaggerating. You know, if this is uh, delta x equals zero, when I put pressure on it, it's this delta x that you uh, deformed it. Uh, the shear stress causes the top face of the block to move to the right relative to the bottom. Uh, the shear stress causes the front cover of the book to move to the right relative to the back cover. That's shear modulus. Some items have a lot of, uh, I'm thinking of like super glue. Super glue, you know, they used to show a guy in a hard hat, you know, dangling from a, an eye beam because it had a lot of tensile strength. Uh, super glue has very poor shear strength. In other words, if you were to uh, take a, a, a hammer and knock that, that hat, it would, it would slide off. So it has a lot of tensile strength, not much shear strength. So it depends on the, uh, um, uh, the type of force applied. It, it used to be a trick that we would uh, super glue a, a nickel or a quarter to, uh, uh, to the floor. Of course, people bend down, pick it up, and it's super glued. You can't pick it up. All you got to do is come up and give it a sidekick, and that nickel will uh, will slide because it doesn't have, there is no, uh, uh, there's very little shear strength, lots of tensile strength, you can't pull up on it, but it has very little uh, shear strength. Um, okay, let's, um, uh, so the shear stress is the force times the area, the area being this, this top area here, and here's the force being applied to it in this direction, and then the amount uh, the delta X over the H uh, is the amount of strain. Okay, in bulk modulus here, I was talking about eraser inside a, uh, uh, you know, er eraser will most likely float, but if you were to be, be able to get it down into a, uh, a long tube of water with all that pressure on it, it would compress. The cube undergoes a change in volume, but no change in shape. It still is a cube but it does change in volume. So the bulk modulus is a volume stress and a force times area. Uh, and the volume strain is delta V, uh, delta V over V initial. And I think the delta P there uh, uh, is just the change in pressure, um, the, the change in pressure. Uh, uh, so, it, it's a minus delta P over delta V, V initial, because it, it gets smaller. Okay, so here's some typical elastic moduli. Um, you can see uh, tungsten, very high. It looks like these are in, in ranked from, from uh, uh, strong to weak. Tungsten has 35 times 10 to the 10. Um, Newton meters squared, uh, steel 20 times 10 to the 10, copper 11 times 10 to the 10, brass 9.1, um, aluminum seven. So, you, you know, the aluminum tungsten is five times as great as uh, aluminum. Uh, the glass is between 6.5 and 7.8 quartz, 5.6. And of course, there's nothing for water and mercury that they come later in the bulk modulus. Uh, so you can see that, that it's pretty much the same. The ranking is pretty much the same for uh, shear modulus. Tungsten is 14 times 10 to the 10th Newton per meter squared. 
uh, steel 8.4, copper 4.2, brass 3.5, aluminum 2.5. Um, tungsten's not quite uh, seven times um, as it, uh, or five times as it was. Um, well, I mean, I, uh, that is probably uh, close to the same. Glass is 2.6 to 3.2, and quartz is 2.6. Now, the bulk modulus, tungsten. Um, 20, uh, steel 6, copper 14, brass 6.1, and there, here we have water and um, mercury, you know, people say, well, well water is an incompressible fluid. It can compress. We used to do, um, we had a, a water jet where we actually did, we could cut steel with uh, water. Um, the, I mean, the water wasn't by itself. It had garnet being uh, injected into the flow stream, and you could cut steel. It's the way they 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 put up these uh, buildings and put up these panels, and then they say, "Okay, I want a door here," and they'll just use a water knife and cut the door, uh, uh, they cut the hole, and install a door. Uh, it's easier to make these panels and uh, um, and put them up. That's one of the uses for water knives. Um, they're loud. Believe me, they're loud. You need hearing protection. But the point is that water can compress. Don't let people say tell you that water is an incompressible fluid. Um, okay, let's see. Here, here's some uh, quizzes. Which elastic modulus describes the relationship between stress and strain for a block of iron sliding across a horizontal floor? The friction force between the sliding block and the floor causes the block to deform. Well, here's a block. You throw this. You slide this block and the it's going to deform like this what kind of what kind of modulus is that well that's a shear that's shear modulus and sure enough the answer is b the shear modulus okay which elastic modulus describes the relationship between stress and strain for a trapeze artist swinging through a circular arc at the bottom of the swing the wire supporting the trapeze are no long are longer when the trapeze artist simply hangs from the trapeze due to the increased tension in them. So in other words, if he just hangs there, it's one, one tension, but if he's swinging through and he's, um, it's increased tension because of the centripetal force, uh, what are we looking at? We're looking at elongation of the cables. That's a Young's modulus. Now, let's look. Which elastic modulus describes the relationship between stress and strain for a spacecraft carrying a steel sphere to a planet on which atmospheric pressure is much higher than on the Earth? The higher pressure causes the radius of the sphere to decrease. Well, it's the bulk modulus. But there you go. Okay, now, uh, and this is a little section on pre stressed concrete. Uh, concrete. Uh, by itself doesn't, uh, if it's unsupported, it doesn't take loads very well. Uh, you can put steel reinforcing rods and it improves it a little bit, but it still can deform. However, if you, when you pour the concrete, if you pull these cables, you pull these cables under uh, tension, you know, would you stretch them and anchor them, you pour your concrete, then once you Pour your concrete, you cut the cable so that the the cables are now pulling on the uh, the 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 concrete. You, the concrete is now under uh, compression, and it's stronger. It's stronger. Um, it can you can hold a lot more uh, weight uh, than if it were uh, just a plain concrete or even concrete with rebar, rebar, steel reinforcement bars. And that uh, pretty much ends our uh, discussion on 12.4. Yes, all right, so let's stop.